Hello in game fans, since January did kick us off with quite a number of fantastic indie games, the smaller hidden gems are of course worth a look as well. So here are my picks, with special mention going to Scale Boy Refractured, the Steam release of an action adventure title that was previously Switch exclusive. Some of you did mention that you liked the 2D sprites contrasted with the 3D environments, and I would have to agree, with this version adding more content, making it totally worth a play. We begin with the 8-bit excellent Street Cleaner the video game, a retro action platformer where you play as a motorcycle helmet wearing protagonist and have to clean the streets of San Diego from criminals and baddies. It's based on a musician of the same name, so of course that means a good soundtrack, with the game itself being quite classically designed. One of the beautiful adventure games of the month was Encodia, where you control a little girl and her robot guardian set in the dark megalopolis controlled by corporations. Find Sim. My fingers are too big to fit in there. You have your stereotypical cyberpunk elements like a corrupt mayor, the people being addicted to the internet and so forth, with a decent story to keep you going, but the visuals are the highlight for sure. I love tycoon games, so I do think Academia School Simulator is worth a look, one which has you building a high school with the necessary facilities to back it up. It's relatively freeform with some impressive amounts of simulation, although as with most tycoon games, there are scenarios where you are tasked with a special setup or certain objective. Not too big a fan of the look, but I guess it works as well as something like Prison Architect or Rimworld, so certainly one of interest. The multiplayer action platformer Jampala will be of interest as well, where it's about math and counting down as the player that gets in the last hit on the platform is awarded the points. Seven playable characters provide variety, each having their own special abilities which will keep things fresh, so the next time you're looking for a competitive multiplayer title, do think of this. Tiny Lens is a simple but pleasant spot the difference title, now in full 3D and having some nice level designs. Not much more to say other than it's neat and casual, so pick it up if you want something relaxing. It was a calm night. The fish planets were sleeping silently. From the shadows came a strange creature whose only intention was destruction. <laughs> I'm still very impressed with the visual look of Tohu, a point-and-click adventure game where a girl and her mechanical alter ego must solve puzzles to unlock the truth behind the secret engine of the planet. Good puzzles and the wonderful look are key, so if you love games like Machinarium and want something new, this is the game to pick up. Six titles are another favourite of mine, so Magellana got my attention, having some wonderful character art and being set in outer space. Variety in character classes, a replayable campaign with different party compositions, and just an overall sense of style makes it of interest. Although it's in early access, this is only planned for 1 to 2 months, with the main goal being balance, but the game is fully playable, so give it a go.
I talked about Lamp Chronicle in my video on games I missed for the month, being a wonderful fairy tale metroidvania which is in early access. Now while early access titles in the genre continue to confuse me, I have to admit that this looks awesome and has potential and is certainly one to keep an eye on as a fan of the genre. The Rook Light Auto Battler is growing on me with Astronach being one of the best so far. The pixel art is simple but it works, where party composition and management are the most important parts as per all auto battlers, but there is rook like procedural generation, random events and more to keep things interesting. There's even an ascension system like Slay the Spire, named Corruption here, with up to 20 levels of difficulty, so plenty of challenge and if you're new to this sub-sub-genre, I would recommend starting with this. While I'm not a trained person myself, I do have to give special mention to NIMBY Rails, a minimalist take on the genre that allows you to build rail lines all across the world. Living in Singapore, I appreciate the convenience of a well-designed metro line, although cross-border trains are not really a thing here, but if you want to build, design, or simply watch trains go by, this is an excellent title to do so. We move into the top 5 with a very cleverly designed title in Luck Be A Landlord a roguelike title where you use a literal slot machine to get rent and to defeat capitalism, where you can add symbols to the machine to try to change your luck. Landlords and property tend to be old money so to speak, adding the luck factor of being born into such circumstances and the randomness of slots is perhaps perfect for explaining the financial situations that people find themselves in. Ancient Abyss is a procedurally generated 2D Zelda-like title, so of course I was in. Since the look, fire effects and combat look interesting, and I have to say, the action does not disappoint. However, it does seem as though translation is very rough, leading to nonsensical text, but given that it's an early access, should the developer use a proper localization service, that would be ideal. Still, decent enough for now, here's hoping things get fixed and more content to be added in early access. Sword of the Necromancer has one of the best animated opening trailers that I have seen, where you use the power of said weapon to reanimate defeated enemies to fight for you. While not the next Wizard of Legend by any stretch, it nonetheless is well put together and worth a play with some interesting ideas. Of course the pixel art of Disjunction drew me to the game, with it interestingly being a stealth action title as compared to a more standard twin stick shooter that I was initially expecting. It has a 3 protagonist setup, where their lives and fates are intertwined, where you unravel the links by playing through the game. It's a cyberpunk title, so expect cybernetic upgrades and futuristic gadgets, all wrapped up with good minute-to-minute -minute action and is not to be missed. Puzzle games are always a difficult sell but I do love them, which is why they tend to end up in Hidden Gems videos like this, with Solas128 being the example here.
On the surface, it does look like a derivative laser beam deflection title, having to wrap your head around mirrors and angles, but the light beams are represented by discrete beads of light, where combining beads will cause them to change colour and characteristics, but you might also have to make them out of sync to solve a puzzle. Also, all the puzzles are interconnected, forming part of a huge, humming ancient machine which you're trying to restore back to life, so the epic scale of this made it very interesting indeed, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.